as Australia announces plans to join NASA's new mission to the moon, Brad Pitt is blasting off into the solar system in his epic new space movie, Ad Astra. Now he stars as an astronaut searching for his missing father, played by Tommy Lee Jones. What a cast. Weekend Sunrise movie man Jason Jabber Davis joins us this morning from the Sunshine Coast. Morning to you, Jabs. Morning, Mon. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. Well, Matt Damon's done it. George Clooney's done it. Matthew McConaughey has done it. Uh, Ryan Gosling, he's done it as well. Jump into an astronaut jumpsuit and head to the green screen for the furthest reaches of space. Now, finally, Brad Pitt's done it. <clears throat> and pardon me, he has done a magnificent job. He really carries the load in this film. And I think Donald Trump might have had a sneak peek at that Astra because he last night was talking about how the US are planning to head to Mars via the moon, which is exactly what Brad does in this film. Film. Uh, he's Major Roy McBride, an astronaut who miraculously survives a fall from a deep space antenna that he was working on. Uh, he gets called into Spacecom, which is the futuristic version of NASA, um, and they want to know why there are energy pulses coming from a mysterious spaceship deep in space. The spaceship was part of a, something called the Lima mission, which was piloted by his father Clifford, played by Tommy Lee Jones. Visually, this is one of the most spectacular space films I've ever seen up there in the league with gravity into Stella, the wow. Martian. There's a scene on the moon with a buggy chase that is worth the price of admission alone. Let's take a look at Ad Astra. We are not clear. I repeat, we are not clear. We have multiple enemy craft in pursuit. <laughs> That is hair-raising stuff, Ad Astra, which is in cinemas now. It comes from director James Gray, whose previous film, The Lost City of Zed, was really interesting, an uh, exploration into the far reaches of the uh, Amazonian jungle. Now he's in the far reaches of space. One of the great films about space, four stars for Ad Astra, and the release of that film delayed over and over again while they worked on the post-production, and they have done a phenomenal job. It really looks like it was shot in space. Wow, four stars. That's a big one for you, Jabs. It, it's a big movie. Now, this one's for you, Mona. I know you're going to love it. Um, I love Rocky. Yeah, I know what this we're going is to talk Rambo, about. though. Oh, it's Rambo. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, maybe yeah, no, Sylvester should have left uh, things yeah. with Rocky Sorry. Balboa because <laughs> he certainly went out on a high in the Creed films. Now he's back for a fifth Rambo film. And when you go back to the first Rambo from 1982, that is a beautiful, brilliant, heartfelt film about mm. a Vietnam veteran wandering the country. He no longer recognises and he's no longer welcomed in. He gets into a beef with local law enforcement. In this one, five films on, uh, Stallone, uh, Rambo, lives with a Mexican housekeeper slash kind of sister uh, and, the, and her niece. Niece. The niece goes to Mexico looking for her father, falls in with a gang of uh, human traffickers and drug runners. They grab the girl. Horrible things happen. Naturally, Rambo goes berserk. Let's take a look. All these years I've kept my secrets. But the time has come to face my past. Oh, revenge. There's a whole lot of build, about 60 minutes before they get back to that ranch uh, and old mate Rambo sets all these traps uh, and he lures the Mexican drug cartel in. It is very violent, it's gruesome, it's bloody and there's woeful dialogue. This is not a film I'd recommend, Mon. OK, so to just miss the heart, does it? And how does Rambo go at 73? He's still got it. I'm, I'm amazed by his physical prowess. I mean, Stallone mm. is certainly still, at 73, able to, to pull off this kind of action. But just story-wise, it's just bodgy as, as all get out. Mm. It's from a director that did get the gringo with Mel Gibson a couple of years yeah. ago, which was a pretty entertaining film. This, I think the fans are going to love this film. I consider myself a fan. I didn't like it. Very quickly, Joker is coming up, Monique. Uh, it comes from Todd Phillips, who directed The Hangover. Oh, and yeah. We went to watch uh, the Between the Two Ferns movie last night on Netflix. Did you love didn't it? Didn't get a lot of laughs out of it, Mon. Oh, really? A little disappointing. We just showed so we a little clip of it yesterday. Hangover. This is Zach Galifianakis, of course, who's extended his show, Between Two Ferns. Um, 
All right. You didn't like it. Well, I know, I know you're I a fan. I know this is anticipated to see the film, but uh, you check it out. You let me know. Check back in with Uncle Jabber and tell me what you think <laughs> of Between Two Ferns, the movie. In the meantime, watch The Hangover and get ready for The Joker, which is coming in the next couple of weeks. All right, Uncle Jabs, that's something wrong about that. Thank you so much, and I Thanks, will um, talk to you again next week. Thank you, Jabber.